There are many principles written up in the dressing room here at Twickenham that every England player will be reminded of as they step out against Italy. In his pursuit of excellence, everything a player does, wherever he is, England must be at the forefront of his mind. Personal ambition must be subsumed by the collective need of the squad. Everything he does must be for the ultimate benefit of the team and their core values. After three successive wins, England strive to contain the weight of the country's expectations as they prepare to face Italy on Sunday. Welcome to O2 Inside Line. Coming up, Brad Barrett and Joe Marla take control of player camp. It's Brown and Strettle in teammates and we meet Mr. England. But before that, Dan Cole and Billy Twelve Trees look ahead to the challenge of Italy. Uh, England's live speed has been a huge focus for us this year and um, as you can tell from a few of these clips, I think it's especially off a kick chase, we want to get as much line speed as we can, you know, early tackles, chop low, so the line's really connected there which is great, good low tackles. We do a lot of work on sort of setting around the breakdown with the pillar and guard and we're able to get off the line as one and go forward and put pressure on guys and hit them behind the gain line as we do here. It shows here it's good, this France playing in their own half and then they're forced to kick the ball straight back to us to give us possession and that that's our sort of principles to get in their faces, make them panic and put the pressure on them, make them make mistakes and especially the Italians will get up in their face and make, be a nuisance. It's my job and against the French uh, we didn't have a particularly successful day, there was a lot to learn. No, the Italians are obviously known for, renowned for their scrimmaging, you know, this is against Scotland on Scotland's put in and the Italians just chased it through all the weight, they were able to push them off their own ball and win the penalty. You let them hit and get the full momentum there like they have, they'll win penalties and we've got to be able to stop that in ourselves, we've got to match them on the engage and try and take that away from them. They'll hit, the ball will go to the eight feet, as you can see there. They'll wait for the opposition back row, as you can see, I think it's Dostatoire on the far side in the French pack. They'll stand up, and then the Italians call a second shunt, and it's a long scrum, you know. They say it's, you know, 10 seconds they're pushing for, which is obviously to wear out the opposition pack. But, you know, they'll win a penalty if not, and we've got to be wary of that, and, you know, we'll deal with it accordingly. There are opportunities on the pack. You look here, the Welsh will win the engage, and they're just able to go forward, and the back row stand up, and the Welsh will shrunk them, and that's something every pack wants. Now Brad Barrett points the player cam in the kitchen. Now uh, James just taught us how to chop it pretty quickly, so I'm just going to give it a go. So there's your need there. So, uh, here you go. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> oh, <laughs> it's Mike Brown and Dave Strettle in this week's teammates. Dave's ugly, Dave's ugly. Watch his nose, watch, watch his nose. Watch his <laughs> <laughs> Can you hold my pocket while we do this? Just the inside of my pocket. Prison break. <laughs> don't know. <laughs> you look like tea bag on it. No, I don't. <laughs> Quite messy, aren't you? Yeah. I remember actually rooming you. You were yeah. very messy, and I'm quite a tidy person, so you can't tie his tie. He used to have to tie his tie for him after every Quinn's game. <laughs> yeah, no, I can do it now, so it's fine. The fact that he looks like the cameraman. Yeah, <laughs> just met my long lost brother. <laughs> yeah, it's a good looking, lad, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Chris Robshaw. I've never known anyone snore like him. It's, it's, thank God he's captain, he gets his own room. And, and I can't describe how loud it is. Put it this way, I, I shouted to him one, one night, I shouted to him to wake him up, and he snored back louder. That is how bad it is. Benefits. <laughs> <laughs> uh, say join or something like that. Probably would have gone to uni. I don't know if I'd pass uni. <laughs> You'd have gone world. to uni? Yeah. That's a lie. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> In this week's Team Behind the Team, we meet Mr England. I'm part of representing the rugby union to the supporters, really. I think that's probably what it's all about. At the end of my playing career in sport, I decided that I was going to come to all the England games instead of just like odd ones and support, and support the team in national attire. You know, very patriotic. I just got a phone call one summer in 2000, said we'd like to be the first ever official England mascot. I was just like, yes. I think it's probably the most important thing I do is when I meet the team coach, I just always feel it's just so special and the players really warm to it. And then I come, I get back just in time for the players to come charging up the tunnel and that's like magic to be there waving my flag. And then I go and sit in the seat, oh, come on England, we've got to win. <laughs> I'm so proud and passionate about what I do, about my country. People say to me, when will you retire? 
don't want to ever retire. She thinks I'm a prat. <laughs> Next up, Joe Marler films a cookery course. Uh, he's got a little mix of uh, shallots and garlic with a little bit of olive oil. Now he's uh, adding the risotto rice. Add a bit of salt into your uh, your rice. Add your stock. Stock. Best cook. Best both worlds. Like I say, though, never trust a skinny chef. Right? Yeah, I'm part French as well. <laughs> That's all from today's show. Let's hope England can continue their winning streak with a strong performance against Italy on Sunday. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.